is the Board of Selectmen meeting. It's a regular meeting of May 19th. We are doing it live. We're doing it live, the first live meeting since the beginning of COVID. Um, we're at the East Lime Town Hall upper meeting room. The meeting is starting at 7.30, or just, just after 7.30 p.m. If you'd all please um, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. It's nice to be able to do that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. What a strange trip it's been. It's been about 14 months since we were able to do this uh, live. I thank you all for um, coming in here and setting the um, example, setting the tone as other commissions are going to be encouraged to start using our facilities again. We're maskless as, as per the governor's orders for those who, do, who have been vaccinated. And um, we have spread out a little bit as we have Mrs. Hardy and Mr. Daigle on a um, supplemental the um, dynamic podium. Duo. Yes, the dynamic duo is, is, um, is, is in an annex. That's, that's what we'll call that table, the annex. See, there they are. Oh, we just, there they are sitting right that's there. That's terrific. So we're also dealing with a, a town hall that over the last 14 months, we put new ceilings in, we put new ventilation in, we uh, put new audio visual in. So we, we hope the experience at home, those watching um, is a little clearer. We're hoping the audio is better. We're hoping um, that the controllers, and there's multiple controllers in town, each commission, uh, will be able to f f finagle this and understand this a little bit better. So uh, on with the meeting. Um, additional agenda or consent items? None. I don't believe so. Delegations, anyone like to speak to the Board of Selectmen this evening? If not, the approval of the minutes of the special meeting and the regular meeting of twenty of uh, April 21st. I'll move to approve the special <coughs> meeting minutes of April 21. 2021 as submitted. Second. Motion and seconded. Any comments, corrections? All in favor say aye. 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 And are there any opposed? Are there any abstentions? Thank you. I'll move to approve the regular meeting minutes of April 21, 2021 as submitted. Second. Regular meeting. Motion and seconded. Comments? Corrections? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, there is a consent calendar. Do look it over um, as there's, it's an extensive, um, I don't see any conflicts that are um, jumping out at me. So I guess you could. Yeah, I'll move to approve the consent calendar for the meeting of May 19th, 2021 in the amount of $18,514.39. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Uh, first order of new business this evening um, is uh, to authorize the first selectman to enter into a lease agreement with the Niantic Lions Club. I'm happy to report the Lions who do nothing but serve our community with honor and selflessness are going to have their they're, um, they don't call it a lobster fest anymore. It's an art fest. And they're going to have an art fest on the town green. I'll let the selectmen know they're not going to fill it to capacity. I think they're going to operate at a slightly reduced number, again, to spread out the crowd. Um, but they, they, they wish to do that on our property on July 4th weekend, if, if there's a uh, motion to right. approve that. I'll move to approve and to authorize the first selectman to enter into a lease agreement with the Niantic Lions Club for the purpose of selling food in connection with the art show on July 3 and 4, 2021. The town grants to the Lions for the period uh, from 4 p.m. on Friday, July 2, 2021 through 10 p.m. on Sunday, July 4, 21, the right to use the land at the town hall on Pennsylvania Avenue, which is to be set aside for that purpose by the town. I'll second. The motion and second. And any comments? Hope to see you all there. It's always like 150 degrees out that day. Actually, we've had a couple. We've had some really yeah. nice days. So. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Yeah. I'd like to um, ask your indulgence to take the next two items, B and C, 2A, B, and C, and move that uh, down below, um, I guess, 
after public comment or after first selectman's report? We could do that after uh, yeah after first selectman's report. Yeah, we can do that because then we'll have to come back and uh, close the meeting anyway, if you don't mind, no. uh, because we do have a um, presentation, a exciting presentation this evening. So if it's if it, it, anybody opposed to that, no. we're going to move that. So th then we will go to the old business and the POCD plan update, Michelle. And Gary, I bet are you tag teaming tonight? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. At the That's great. Our town planner and um, our ever talented chair of the POCD commission that spent um, how how long did you spend on that, Michelle? Two years. Two, Two years. years. All right. I don't know how these microphones work, and um, you'll see on the back here is the little switch, and you'll see did the you light. Did you get it? Yep, it's working because he does. This is the best check ever. I've been trained. To okay. So it's probably a little directional, so you should probably have it pointing to you as you did. So, good. All right. So I just wanted to provide the group with an update since I was last before this board in November of 2020. Thank you for having me. Uh, the Planning Commission unanimously approved the adoption of the 2020 Plan of Conservation and Development in December. We filed it with the State of Connecticut, and it was accepted. Um, and the Planning Commission then moved to keep the POCD subcommittee as an active subcommittee so that we could implement the, so we could facilitate rather the implementation of the recommendations in the plan. So as part of that, we've been attending various town boards and commissions to go over the plan, um, talk through any questions and invite interested parties to join the subcommittee or attend our meetings. We're gonna meet about six times a year, we think, um, before the planning commission meetings. So, um, why am I here tonight? <laughs> uh, many of those same reasons. I'm happy to answer any of your questions on the plan and to invite you to appoint anyone from the board to the subcommittee if you'd like or just pop into the meetings. But I also wanted to be here tonight to appeal to you as the primary governing body of the town to take a real serious look and a leadership approach to some of the harder, larger, and critically important recommendations in the plan. One of the requirements for this update was that we include resiliency and sustainability recommendations along in each chapter. As we're all keenly aware, this year has tested our collective resiliency in countless ways. But unfortunately, we know that additional challenges to our community lie ahead, and we must think about what's needed to mitigate future risk rather than find ourselves in a recovery cycle. It's the right thing to do to protect our community, and it's also the fiscally prudent thing to do for our taxpayers. We've talked in the past about all the community input that went into this document and the questionnaire results, and about why residents choose to live here. And even more so than the schools, which are great, was the resource of our coastline. But what happens as our beaches continue to recede? or flooding on our coastal downtown creates road closures when a storm hits at the right timing for high tide, or coastal flooding impacts our critical water infrastructure and potentially disrupts water service to residents, or we all know that even a good windy day can cause widespread power outages and we have very limited control over Eversource's restoration schedule. We've also seen recently what disruptions to supply chains across the country can do to us here locally when it comes to getting the supplies that we need to run a community. Our community needs resilient roads, water, and electricity just to survive, never mind to thrive. And we've already experienced the kinds of events that put those necessities in jeopardy. What if Tropical Storm Sandy were a hurricane? We can and should plant the pollinator gardens and add the sidewalks and support community gardens. But the big challenging recommendations like microgrids and water infrastructure and flooding mitigation that are in this document will have a huge impact on the community's resilience and will require the leadership of this board. You are all dedicated public servants, some with a lifetime of service to this town and I respect you very much for giving back to East Lyme in this way. And that's why as we look at the long-term planning and the shorter term and unexpected opportunities like FEMA reimbursements or the American Rescue Fund, as they come up, 
that we consider investing some of these monies in the kinds of projects that will not only improve our lives today, but will help us get through what will come tomorrow. So with that, I'd like to open it up to any questions. I'm happy to talk through specific recommendations with you. Um, offer the floor to Gary for additional. <laughs> I don't know what else to add, um, other than I would support, obviously, the POCD and the recommendations in it. Get on the microphone, please. Um, I was saying I do support all the recommendations in the POCD. Uh, there are some larger challenges there to, to overcome, and I think they're, they're going to be on our doorstep uh, sooner than later. So uh, it's, I think this is a great opportunity uh, ahead of those things to bring it to your attention and so that you're aware and we can start making uh, decisions now. Um, as I say, we, we only live in the results of our decisions, so I think now's the best time to take action. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and well said. Um, you're asking us to commit to the big picture, especially the big picture items, the big stuff. I'm asking you to look at it critically. Yeah. And, and so let's talk about it a little bit. Um, flood mitigation. What could we do better? How could we do that? Well, we do have the Stantec study from late 2018. All of the, re the recommendations from that study are included in the POCD. Talks about a lot of specific um, points where there's regular flooding now and mitigation efforts for those points. Some of them are at some pretty significant traffic junctures. I'm sure you're all familiar with the study. You committed <laughs> it. Um, but that, those are the kinds of documents that are in that are that we referenced to as we made these big recommendations. Okay. Um, Circa's study on water infrastructure for coastline areas and identifying, you know, through uh, town staff and through the studies, what some of our more at-risk infrastructure may be. That was that's in here too. Okay. Things like that. I would say some. There are recommendations in here that I think uh, come from uh, activities that are currently being undertaken. Mm -hmm. Things like, uh, you know, in terms of water and sewer, right? You got the saltwater intrusion concern, right? That's something right. that you guys are, it's ongoing. Right. Uh, nonetheless, it's still going to be a long term planning thing to, to deal with. Uh, some of the pump stations, flooding. We're rebuilding those, a pump station to put I think it, yeah. What, what Michelle is saying is that you're already aware of most of these. Yeah. These are the things that we got to tackle. Highlighting them now uh, ahead of Good. the next storm, um, and the, the, the same philosophies of sustainability apply with other recommendations as they would in, in these cases. Okay. Other questions? When you, uh, you presented to us in November, um, uh, I brought up a point about, and I know it's difficult, but is there any plan by the subcommittee to prioritize the recommendations? Mm because uh, obviously we can review the recommendations and, right. and put number 10 as number one and it, it may not be, you know, based on, I would value your recommendation based on the hard work that you and the subcommittee put together. And, and I know it's difficult to rate one through 10 <laughs> when they're all big things, but what is the biggest risk? What is the biggest return for an investment of the taxpayer's money uh, to, to, to achieve the goals of the POCD? So, uh, I would welcome some that type of uh, feedback uh, as we yeah. we work to make a decision on what we're going to go go tackle. That's exactly where we're at now, and that's another reason that we wanted to kind of keep the committee together um, because we totally agree with you. And one of the recommendations is that we prioritize. <laughs> is it prioritized in the document? No, but it's acknowledged that the prioritization needs to happen, and. One of the things that we did do, um, you have the list of recommendations, I believe, in your board packet separate from the full copy of the POCD, just to make it a little bit easier to handle. Um, we talked the last time I was here about creating a recommendations matrix and um, you know, going through each recommendation and finding out which board or commission would kind of be involved in implementing it. We have started that. We do not have this because it's like not a printable file at this point. It's quite large and unwieldy, and it's a working document. 
um, of the subcommittee, but this will help us do exactly that. Because some of the recommendations are not only, to Mark's point, already underway, but some of them um, can be tackled uh, without uh, municipal investment, and some are currently being tackled without municipal investment through, you know, uh, nonprofit groups and community volunteers and things like that. So um, that's a very long answer to yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we lo I'm glad that you're still working that endeavor, and look forward to the recommendations that you you can bring forward to us. Thank you. Yeah, it's. Um, <laughs> Huge. It's overwhelming, frankly. Um, well, one of the things I th so really, many priorities. Yeah, is the fact that you're going to meet six times a year allows you not to. Because so often in the past we've passed the POCD and off it goes. Now you're going to be reviewing this document on a continual basis, so you can. And here again, priorities change. As the last year has proved nothing, priorities and you know important stuff changes in a matter of hours, let alone days. And I think this is a really good basis to go for, forward or for, especially when it comes here, because we know with the American Rescue Plan, you know, some of that uh, resource is going to be devoted to water and sewer because it's our sewers are 30 years old. We need to, you know, we're, we're rebuilding some pump stations. We've got plans to do a lot in the future, but you know, that's great to do that. Microgrids. I know uh, Mr. Bergoff a couple of years ago tried. We were hoping to get a microgrid system up near Lord B. Haynes. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. But that's something I know. We have a lot of interest in, and he has been uh, constantly looking forward to move forward for because that is a fantastic resource if you can get it. So, but really I get, good. I got something on my desk now. On okay. Microgrids. I'm working on. But you're right. Yeah, we came this close, and the funding ran out, and the developer went somewhere else or whatever. But and that's a really good point too. Is that not only? I mean, we talked about this, but we did the community survey. We looked at all these studies, but we also had a lot of conversations with town staff who mm. know this town, yeah. you know, and what they do in this town better than any of us. So, um, you know, a lot of these things I know have already been in front of you, but having them in yeah. this document really helps us. Um, Absolutely. And I think too, you know, to that point about funding, one of the recommendations in here is, you know, to consider using some funds for a grant writer to try to get us the funds to do some of these bigger projects um, because they're more cost prohibitive. Yeah. Good. Any other comments, questions? Yeah. Um, just, uh, I commend you for keeping this uh, committee open. I think that's a unique thing. I don't remember that being done before. Um, and thank you for coming before us. The only thing I could add is, I would say, been your expitio and uh, seeing a lot of this stuff, and it's all good. I'm glad you're putting it in a nice form for us all to bring it back. No, I think it's great you're identifying stakeholders. Um, you may want to invite our state representatives and senators because a lot of these things, some of the things you were talking about, like flood mitigation, are on state roads, so there's only so much we can do about it. You know, this commission could petition, but uh, really it's probably going to be our state senators, our state senator, our state representative. That so you may want to invite them to a meeting. And maybe point out here are a few things that we'd like to address. Good call. So, yeah. so, from your committee work, if you were going to uh, rank order, uh, what would you say would be the top three priorities, regardless of money? Oof. Um, well, I'm not sure that I have three for you today. I mean, there's a few themes, and you please jump in if you if you disagree, but here's what we kind of kept coming back to. Um, ways to encourage agriculture so that we have sustainable local food sources. If something, you know, were to happen with a highway shutdown or, you know, supply chain issue and we needed to feed our community, having agriculture here in town would be critical. Um, reliable energy projects, um, transportation, and dealing with the impacts of being a coastal community, not only on flooding and what that does to property, but also what it does to our infrastructure. So personal property and things like our water system, our roads, our downtown. So those are themes, not uh, 
specific recommendations, but a lot of them point to those things. Did I miss any? Water or drinking water yeah. supplies. There seems to be more discussion heading toward sustainability than open space. Well, that's part of it. Yeah. Um, I, I just, it just kind of hitting me a little bit that we're we're talking about you know bolstering up our flooding and and, and infrastructure and farms um, and, and sustainability in that sense. Um, and not so much a focus of preserving necessarily open space because you can't almost can't have both. Um, um, you know, there's only so much money, and I'm not to be the Debbie Downer, but you know, where are we going to put the money? You know, put it into improving infrastructure for the next pandemic, or buying open space so the town doesn't grow so we can at least maintain somewhat the size we are. It's all or related. try to find a balance, it's right? It's all related, right? So yeah, it, it all is. touches each other. So open space protects our water supply. And if right. we have a bad water supply, then we don't have anything, you know? Right. That's one of those elements that takes away everything else if we don't get it right. right. And I mean some of the uh, some of the coastal resiliency recommendations are not for, you know, hardscapes to uh, you know, pr keep the water out. They are for open space to let the water do go where we want where it's supposed to, to go. Be, yeah. yeah, where it wants to go. Yes. Yeah. Water will water will always go back to where it can where it, where it originally belongs if yeah. we leave it alone. Yeah. Interesting. Good stuff. Good stuff. And again, I'll, I'll echo. Um, glad you, you're going to continue. And um, I, I don't know, um, we'll, we'll have some discussion about who we might send as an ex officio to your commissions. I, I know Kevin would be interested, and uh, we'll, we'll ask around, and maybe we'll have one or two show up. But we don't want to get in the way either. You guys know what you're doing and all that. But I definitely want to assign a, a, an ex officio so you always have representation for the Board of Selectmen. That way we get updates as well. It goes both ways. Well, I, you know, I, and I love some of what we've seen here the, about the agricultural resources. People have already grabbed that uh, ball and started oh, to run with course. it. I mean, it's just great. Bruce Cohen, what he's doing with the, uh, you know, the giving gardens, uh, and Marjorie, what she with the uh, pollinator pathways. You know, these are people who have just, you know, on their own, you know, and that I think speaks to the culture of the town. You know, l let's make a very nice place even better. You know, so anyway, but thank you, Michelle. You too, Gary. So. Thank and, you. and if I may as well, um, I, I echo uh, some of the comments Mr. Daigle made about prioritizing. Um, if you are going to engage in prioritizing you know, this study, um, I think it would be helpful to identify those areas where the town does have some control uh, and, and with the, some of the resources we, we have received. Um, <clears throat> How, how, how we could use those you know, financial resources and then identify uh, what areas in the plan really require help from the state and uh, uh, approaching uh, our representatives up in Hartford so we can know where to uh, invest our energies to the greatest uh, effect. And then overlaying that, which, which areas are most important? Is it um, microgrids is that something we should really focus more on in, in the event of a great emergency where we have lost power for substantial amounts of time I, I think what's happening is people uh, one of the one of the offshoots of, of this pandemic is people realize that things can happen things that we just have never anticipated and and as much as possible we need to try to be ready and, and it's our responsibility here uh, to try to anticipate these things and not just take uh, you know your your project there in Sheldon and say that's really great, but we really have to engage in it and try. We can't do everything, of course, as Mark has pointed. But there's not enough money. But uh, what we do have, there are some things that complement one another: agriculture, and then controlling uh, water flows. These are things that we that can work together, and maybe some things we truly can manage if if we noodled it out a little bit. So thank you very much for what you're doing, and uh, I think if you're going to prioritize, maybe those are some ways that you could look at it. Yeah, great. Thank, and you. thank you. Thanks again.
and we'll use you as a resource. Maybe we'll have you come back every six months or so to give us an update and talk about just talk about things. I think she'll be back before six months. They know we're getting money. Well, that's our pitch. <laughs> and hopefully we can start checking, checking the boxes. Yep. Yeah, and I think just to wrap up, that's one thing that we are looking at too in terms of prioritization is I think, you know, we've all seen that a little momentum goes a long way. So maybe there's a priority of big projects that you know, um, will have the most impact, but we can't accomplish them quickly. Let's find what things we can accomplish quickly and start moving forward on those to generate some community interest and enthusiasm toward, you know, really yeah. enacting a lot right. of this. Go get the low hanging fruit while we're fighting the big battles. Exactly. There you go. Oh boy. <laughs> Thanks again, folks. Thank you. Thank you, well, thank you Gary. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah where, where do I hit the button to block myself off for a couple minutes so I can get, you know, yeah. we can't do that anymore. This is so nice to be actually in person talking. Roseanne, since you weren't ever on screen, you really only could sit there and roll your eyes if you wanted to. and. Uh, <laughs> Um, I don't, we don't have any presentations, let me get on the mic, we don't have any presentations tonight on American Rescue, we've heard a lot already, I've also solicited comments from, uh, from department heads and some uh, chairpersons um, of different various commissions and, and organizations, um, and we've, you know, on paper already spent more than we're going to receive, so, uh, but basically I'm just running a list. I'm just running a list um, of, of things that we have considered, things that we might want to consider. Um, and, and, and as we heard tonight, there'll be more and more requests coming up. And don't forget, what we have to spend this year is only 50% of the money coming at us, which is, I think, at $1.8 million, we'll find out for sure in the next couple of weeks as we actually get the money in. Um, change the 400000 on the East Lime dams to uh, 250. Yeah, this this. Um, no, that's just the, the bottom line costs on that. Oh, is it? No, that would be our costs. Um, the state doesn't have any money for dam repair right now. Um, we can. <laughs> well, let's go to, just down the list very quickly and, and stop me when you have a question. We talked to Youth Services and Dave Putnam about the addition of some social workers and a, a social worker slash um, substance abuse and all that kind of a youth coordinator on, on that end and also a per diem pay as you go um, counselor and that was $75,000. The Wi-Fi in this building needs a, a revamp. It need, we need to have better Wi-Fi in here. Most things are now operating on Wi-Fi, even on our desktops, and we don't have a very good system. This is a cement building, cement block building, and um, um, we, we need to upgrade that. It's $5,000. We also want to do, uh, Paul, you had mentioned this, $14,000 is the package to put in a Zoom-type mechanism so we could go hybrid should this happen again and we can put this in the category of the POCD what are we doing to enable government to move on should this happen again and um, that would allow us to be live here but also have people at home interacting with us on zoom and there'd be a screen it's a it's a it's an expensive package it's fourteen thousand dollars we did I, I just put a round number next to yes ma'am Agreed. Agreed. Um, and I'll make sure that Carmen's working with Grant uh, Place and the, and the rest of the group up there. But uh, we, we need the hardware mm -hmm. for our system here, and I think that's the $14,000 package. But you're right. We also want equity in what we're doing and what we're putting out. 
Karen share in the Shoreline Food Pantry that we heard both from. I put a hundred thousand dollar figure there. I don't think there will be that yeah. much. I They're talking about refrigerators yeah. and you know, freezers and freezers. They they would like new. Um, New vehicle. HVAC. Oh, the other organization talked about a percentage of a, of a new truck with uh, sharing with other businesses. I did not hear back from her. Um, and she was supposed to get back to me about you know other organizations that might contribute toward a, a pickup truck or a van, delivery van. But they, um, the, the Karen Share needs a new HVAC system um, in that building, yeah. shelving, ceiling. You know, kind of give them talking about sustainability give them an opportunity to really plant their flag in there for the next 10 years mm. um, they've been kind of operating in a quasi temporary situation there where we gave them the space but but they haven't invested a lot of money in staying there and and all that so they might want some money not necessarily they don't need food and they don't need money to give out to the community they have they they're well funded um, and well supported by our community, but they do need capital items, um, and, and we will get down to that. I, uh, Pat put a call into me today, but I was in meetings all day. Well, I would like to also add to that that whatever we get um, should be transferable to another facility if necessary. That's a very old building. We have essentially abandoned it. And I'm not, I really don't want to put a lot of money into the building per se. But the freezers and that sort of thing, those would be transferable. They are. Yeah, the generator would be easily transferable. Generator like or, you know, they need an H, they need a better heating and, and air conditioning system for the people that work there. <laughs> and that we're not going to abandon that building anytime soon. It might be an older building, but... Um, we use the rest of it as well. We give them their little space, but we use that building, and I don't see us abandoning it or knocking it down, or, and we certainly don't have the money to build a new one. Um, but I, I agree with you. I don't think we necessarily have to put a whole lot of money into the building for them, but, but um, good point. We do, can, do they have adequate space there, do we know? Or they, they mentioned they don't. We don't have more space to give them. Um, there might be a church with uh, a basement locker that they can do some long-term storage or something else. That's all we have. Yeah. And, um, you know, there might be some space at the public safety building, but I don't know that we want to go into that. Um, there is space at Lily B. Haynes, but I get an another use for that coming up in this. Um, you know, no, we, we don't have any something space. like a Connex box. Yeah, right. maybe. For canned goods. So yeah. You can't put perishable you know, yeah. products yeah. in there, but it would give them some storage capability. And we have that Connex box down at the public safety building that once we get the furniture out of there and we move into the building, that might, and we own the box because the company went, out, went belly up and we. That's an idea. We're holding the hot potato, so we own it. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. That might really help them out. If we can find a way to hide it, yeah, it yeah, around yeah, the yeah. Hide it. same yeah. thing we did behind the old shed at the yeah. bottom there. We put boxes behind it, so, <laughs> so they weren't inside out. the building and put up a two section fence yeah. just so it's not seen from the roads. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of options to sure thing. Comedy. Yeah, that's a good idea. The next item is the East Lime Harbor Master. Um, okay, I, I, I don't, don't no, no, I just I got yeah. texted by the uh, registrars regarding the referendum today. Uh, yeah, I guess you could do it now, but just anybody mind. 422 yes, 176 no, including absentees. So it passed. About 600 votes? 698 votes. 700 votes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this, is an ex this isn't the Harbor Master. This is um, the, the pump-out boat that we use in the river has been um, swamped. It died. It flooded. I think it, it, w it wasn't... Um, who's the fellow from the... From, uh, Save the river. Who's the old, the older guy? They named the beach after him. Grimsey. 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 Yeah. The, it wasn't his boat, but they might have to go back to his boat. I mean, it's a, it's a hundred thousand dollar boat. Mm. The state pays seventy five thousand. We split the rest of the cost with Waterford, so we're getting a hundred thousand dollar boat for twelve thousand five hundred, and they need it, mm. and and good cause right here. Um, very, very important. very important. This is coming up. And I think that would be good because we don't have anything on our list that really supports that those particular commissions. Right. 
Uh, right. It's a, it's a nice it's a nice support there. Yeah. Uh, this is a round figure. I don't think they're going to ask for this much. In fact, I don't think they'll ask for half of this much. The Niantic Main Street Group. We are talking about art. We're talking about murals on sides of buildings downtown. We're talking about art in the park. We're talking about some festivals that they um, and fundraisers that they lost out on that we could um, help them recover some of that funding. So we make sure our all businesses are, are up and running again. But frankly, we have a very vibrant downtown. And if you were downtown this weekend and you were stuck in traffic, that's proof positive the Ni Niantic Main Street isn't going to need a lot of government support because, my God, they're, they're very independent. I wouldn't support the 100000 No. no. I, and, and I'm, I, I think a, the only thing they've really asked for so far is funding for a charrette, another charrette study. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously. Yeah. And, and, and so... That's again. This is a this is a draft list. It's been sitting on my desk. We typed it up. East Line Water and Sewer. I just put a three hundred thousand dollar price tag there. When we talk about to Michelle this this evening about POCD and shoring up our uh, bolstering up our our um, flood mitigation and uh, maybe pump stations that need to be rebuilt. We are build rebuilding the um, the Rocky Neck pump station. Uh, the very end of the line, the old line will be coming through there. They'll help us pay for it. But we're negotiating with the state to move that pump station into Rocky Neck, which has a conservation easement on it, a federal conservation easement, EPA stuff. So to get them to allow us a small footprint, a small little pump station, it's not like we have down here, and to dress it up a little bit so park goers don't see a... A, u a utility building, but they see something pleasant. Um, it's still negotiating, and we're working with DEEP on that. But that needs to be rebuilt. Maybe that's where that money goes, or it goes somewhere else. But I think the three hundred thousand dollars is a, is probably the right number uh, in the ballpark of what we might um, uh, listen to water and sewer and for their ideas. But I will encourage them to come with um, sustainability flood mitigation, POCD in mind on their suggestions, and that will check a couple of our boxes. I think that that uh, money is a vital expenditure. Yeah. We've known for some time, and the ratepayers cannot possibly support this kind of development that's necessary and improvement. Uh, I think our first sewer lines are now like 35 years old, and the only time anything's done for them is if it's an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see $20,000 for the usage study. You heard Dave, Dave Putnam say, listen, um, let's not fund the whole project. Um, let's, let's, let's have a professional come in and, and look at the space, look at the topography, look at the need, um, maybe do a survey of what services might be needed up there and, and, and go forward. He has a $20,000 price tag on that. I did leave the dog park written down. It is something that I, I get calls on often. Like, I thought there was a plan and all that. We do know, and I've identified it should go up there. There's a lot of space for it. Um, and there's a, uh, there's no space down in Niantic. We've looked at every we, nook yeah, and cranny we, we down tried, here. We tried. Did they start some fundraising activities? They did. No. They, 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 we they, returned they, most of the money. Yeah, yeah we did, um, but... We, we returned most of the money. Um, there was a dog park uh, fundraising campaign going five years back, and we yeah. were looking for places down here. And uh, The Vets Park had a conservation easement on it. We were going to put it in the back past the softball fields. That didn't work out. We were looking at Roxbury Road, but we know how contentious that could be, that land. Um, a few other spots. Darrow Pond makes sense. Um, we can spread it out. Um, and, you know, it's, it's little money. To put a big facility, to put a facility in that will serve many. We'll put them. In, we'll put them in first. <laughs> to exercise the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. So to even put a dog walk up there, we have parking issues. Can, That's on here. I think. Yeah. It's on here. It's on there. Where is it? Seventy-five thousand dollars parking lot there upon. Oh, further down. Oh, okay. Further down. And you know what? When I finalize this, we actually start talking about voting on this. I will categorize this stuff and put it all together, um, so we know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a there's a yeah. right. There's a f first push, and then there'll be. We can talk about it for the next six months. I agree with you. Um, 
you'll see the dog. So after dog park is east. We're gonna get the ch we're gonna get the money, all of it. We think one point eight million dollars in two weeks. And so then, let's keep talking. when the money's in hand, then I'll come to you with the first push, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and need and you know, studies and those kind of things, and then the second push. Um, emergency management or microwave dishes. This is in our capital plan. This is one of those things we talked about taking out of the capital plan mm -hmm. and spending um, ARP money on this. It's a thirty-three thousand dollar a year appropriation for three years. We can do it all in once at once for a hundred thousand dollars. Digital conversion. The building department downstairs would like a um, to, to digitalize everything. Um, they. You get the maps, you get the, uh, the, the maps of all the buildings, the big rolls, you see what happens. This town has grown. Our space has not grown. Um, we often, 10 years later, need to go back to the zoning maps to hold someone accountable for the trees they were supposed to leave up or the do not enter signs, the, the curb cuts and all that other things. We need to do that. Frankly, we'll be much more efficient that way and we gotta do that or we gotta put file cabinets in on rollers. Um, I think the hundred thousand is high. It's it's not though because it's the actual conversion costs as well. It's 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 a big it's a big system. It's it's a it's the conversion. Um, to follow up on that, um, and as we go if we go and do that, I think uh, there was an article on the day about Stonington going to a digital application. Yeah, for, for and that's. Use. I think we're going to have to do that so we don't. So that's part of it. Yeah. That'd be part of the system is to just digitize everything and yes, do everything online. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, yeah. that's, I think that's a good idea. And and I think it may solve some of our space issues down there. Because if oh. we can start getting this pile yeah. we can take them a quarter of the room. Down. That's correct. It's yep. gonna it's gonna help. And and I think it deals with sustainability as well. I mean if you were to have a flood and lose all those maps, yeah. you didn't, if you couldn't replace that um, and then have it backed up on the cloud, yeah. um, it, would, it would be a disaster uh, sure. for developers and uh, trying to, as you say, take those yeah. to task. Or enforce, yeah, right. enfor enforcement issues. And, uh, and, and that certainly is, I'm sure, consistent with sustainability. In the it, it is very I mean, expensive very important. to get wet maps sent out, yeah. frozen, and dried to dried. be able to keep them. Wow. Yeah. It's no, I think it's in a very important thing. Right, right, right direction. And, and it move. doesn't have to be natural. It can be a water leak in the building. <clears throat> right. I was, just, I, I was just thinking that, Paul. Me too. So this is just for the maps, not for any other documents? Uh, no, it's all applications, maps, all the um, evidence that is, um, you know, two-dimensional. Um, that can be scanned into the system. And yes, applications and uh, permits, right. everything we could go digital. Like, does everyone has a right to go down there and look at the property and see what permits were pulled and approved? Roseanne, this might be not even uh, part two. Not This isn't the need or the want. It might be the second want. It might be even, because we're going to have two rounds of this $1.8 million, it might fall to the next group of money, but I, I, I have a working list. Um, I think it's important. You see $250,000 on dams. I would suggest that gets split up over the two disbursements over the next couple of years. Yeah, we yeah. have three dams in town, Plants Dam Dam, yeah. Darrow Pond, and another one. Uh, for 161. 161. Is it, it maybe maybe the um, that's the one up the north? That's oh, the, the one that's the one up by Silver Falls. Now. Silver, uh, what is it? Silver, Silver Falls. Silver Falls, because that's the one a few years ago. It's either in need of desperate repair. I was evacuated from my neighborhood because of that. Yeah, for the oh. Silver Falls. I, I was asked yeah. to. I didn't leave. This has been remember that. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, this also addresses yeah. what Michelle was bringing up about right. flooding. We have yeah. something right here. Right. Uh, my concern concern with this is. This is a ROM estimate, and until you get an actual cost, yeah. it would, yeah. with labor and supplies. Yeah, and so on, we, it, it's a, the it's engineers a number, put it but, together, yeah, but yeah, it, I agree. When it goes out to bid, we yeah. shouldn't be surprised if it's something more. Yeah. 
Are we talking about replacing the entire dam or we, armoring it with one? I think repairing them. I don't know if, if some that's dams we'll might need. We'll find that out. I think that's what. Yeah, we're I'm, this is a placeholder figure right so now. We have a study, right? We don't even have a study on the dams, right? Well, we? we're getting reports from the state saying mm -hmm. fix your dams. Okay, yeah. but we'll need a study on how to. We got to hire. Well, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. And then go yeah. You need the, the so repair the design, yeah. and right. then go. Yes. So this, this is a multi-year process. Next, next on the list is streetlight safety. Um, that's that's not. <laughs> we did this together, but we did this um, remotely. Uh, I threw a, a list at her, and she had to read my writing. This crosswalk safety is what I should say, and the idea is to uh, to get streetlights above our crosswalks that are. Uh, they have specialty lighting now. You know this, right? Because you go into like Macy's, and all of a sudden there's something on the floor that's coming from a light we can light up our crosswalks from both from both sides so the people in the crosswalks can be lit up because you know how dark it is down there mm -hmm. with our new street lighting decorative and it can be very focused and we only have four or five street lights that this would need to happen for but we can we can light up our street lights for for public safety we're looking into um getting a steep grant for that but it, it might be a long-term coming, a time coming, but this is a possibility. It's, it's, it is one of the biggest complaints I get in the summertime. Um, every Monday I get a call about how unsafe it is downtown. Kids were crossing the street. Cars didn't see people. I've not seen people in crosswalks. And, and, and not driving fast on Main Street, but it's very difficult to see sometimes. But the other thing is how close the vehicles park to the Vehicles park, so, so people are darting out. So you, they have the cobra heads, but then they can be very, very directional, right into the six-foot wide crosswalk. And another thing to consider, and it would be more costly, is there are pedestrian-activated uh, crosswalk signs. Sort of like up at the high school. You can't no, use no. those. Those, yeah. No, these are solar-powered. That you push button, it doesn't stop traffic. Right. It just gives you a Lights. flashing yellow light, Lights. so that it, the drivers recognize that someone is about to enter the crosswalk. Yeah. So we looked into it, yeah. and in the issue there, because we have those signs at the high school, up by the, the high school, school. Yeah. yeah, and they're going to put another sign just like that in front of Flanders Goods a crosswalk there. I think uh, they're going to do that, but the cars or vans, your van would block that because it has to be you can't put it up high because we have trees yeah. and we have the street lamps and we have wires on one side of the road so they they have to kind of only be eight feet high and vans and trucks and box trucks and block the vision it works there. But, but you wouldn't be able to see it from down the road you can do it in front of the high school because you can be 50 feet away and you'll see the lights blinking but they won't be effective because you won't see them Some from people. down the road. They won't be effective for all traffic. But and it's a state road, road, and they said no. The yeah. state said no? Yeah. Wow. Because it would not work there because there's parking there. They will allow that where there's no, not a parking situation. And that's the mm. traffic standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I was traveling and saw LEDs in the crosswalk. Yeah, like they have, yeah. baked into the buried into the crosswalk yeah. you know um and they blink and they'll get your attention but those are they not don't for, allow them. well yeah, those are not for states that have snow i there's that issue too yeah, right. all right you know there is that so varsity baseball field i don't um that's not supposed to have a thirty thousand dollar figure there if you cross that out it, I, I'm putting it on the list. It's really the responsibility of the Board of Ed. I'm going to have a discussion with Jeff later this week. Um, we may want to take the field over and then replace it or, or fix it, but it should be the town's property if we spend our money on it. But it would be a several hundred thousand dollar job, not a thirty thousand dollar job. Um, it does need to be fixed. We should be fixing the things that we have that are broken before we start building more things. Okay. Yeah, I, I thought so too. That would be my offer to uh, Mr. Newton. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you remember, when we went for the artificial turf, we were supposed to be fundraising coming in right. that would support the rebuild of right. the repair of it when it came due. Uh, that didn't happen. Right. Um, 
So, so with the high school field, um, the football field is a little more difficult for that. But if the high school field gets built, and let's say it goes turf or whatever, that field is used all the time in the summer by mm -hmm. private groups. Yep. So that money could be, they're already getting it now. They're already renting it out now to AU and more to short. So if it was a better field, or let's say it went to a turf field, you would get more of a premium there. And that money, I totally agree with you, Roseanne should go directly into it, and they could raise thousands every year, and it would be very easy to parse, it wouldn't need fundraising. Where does that revenue stream go now, to the Board of Ed? Because it's their field? Yeah. Yes. Same thing for when they rent out the uh, high school field, the football field. Yeah. It's a self-funded project. Yeah. yeah, it should be a payback. I don't know how much they'd raise. I don't know how much they. I don't they know could, how much. If, if that was a nicer field, that's a premium field. They, yeah. They could make. I would say five hundred to a thousand a week. And the other fields they use in town that goes mm -hmm. to Parks and Rec because usually those big tournaments use more than one field. It's some money. I don't think we get all that much, and it does. It's a revenue to yeah. Parks and Rec. Yeah. Yeah, we, we do war on the short uh, Bridebrook. It's it's about seven hundred dollars a weekend. It's not a lot, not of, money. A lot of money. No, it's not a lot. You know, that goes to pay for the chalk and the lights that are on and, and everything else, too. Uh, Eastside Regional Theater is being kicked out of the Mason, um, the Mason Lodge. Masons, good news, and, and you know, those, those Masons are people that give back to our community. They're selfless as well, and, and they do good things. I don't know much about them, but because um, of that secret society that they are. But they're all combining regionally. And they're, they've chosen our Mason Lodge to be their home, and they're going to do a substantial renovation project to the building um, because it needs it. It's a tired building. And only a couple of years ago, they were considering closing because they couldn't afford the rent, the uh, the tax bill. And we we taxed them. I think it's a twelve thousand dollar tax bill a year. So they were struggling because membership is down everywhere in volunteer groups. Um, they're, they're regionalizing, and that is going to be their home. The regional theater has used that spot for about five or six years, um, and they're going to be without a home. It is a Parks and Rec um, offshoot, if you will. It's, uh, it's under the Parks and Rec umbrella. Um, there, I put $30,000 in there just for the arts. Just, you know, there is that space in Lily B, that wing that, yeah, right? And why not have an art and dance and, you know, and it's something youth-centered. But um, that, or I don't know if there's still an open kiva at the middle school. I think they use that now for um, special education. But um, but but that that wing, and maybe it would take a thirty or $50,000 price tag to seal, because there's some security issues. Uh, they would have to have their own separate entrance, so there's you know doors and key locks and security, and then there's heat and all that. And uh, Aaron, Aaron, in Parks and Rec could pay for that part of it. But but I put that in there as a placeholder. Um, they're going to be in desperate need of, of a place to go. We don't have places to go in the summer. They do. They use our schools, but um, you know a lot of kids use that program. I'm a big supporter of that and of the arts in our community. I wish. You know, if the Masons didn't choose our area, there was discussion about turning that into an art center um, and, and having um, art classes and dance classes and theater groups. And there's a theater upstairs where the Masons perform their um, ser their services, their rituals, their rites. their rites. Thank you. Um, and, um, and, and kind of a terrific building for that. But... Um, we're glad they're staying in town too, but I just put that's a placeholder. We can have more of a discussion later. Well, that, um, space at Haynes has been on my mind as well. Yeah, good. Because um, you know, the yeah, yeah. So the seniors could use it during the day, or mm. or for their chair yoga, and you know, for the, the things that they do. Um, yeah. So we we could find use for it, but we're going to have to create. Maybe some parking on that side of the building, and um, we'd have to create a, a separate entrance and also block the right. entrance into the school for security reasons. Mm -hmm. So um, money would be needed. So that's there. Um, Parks and Rec lost fifty thousand dollars in in funding last year. They took it um, 
from prior funding, but you know, part of this American Rescue Plan was to reimburse towns and municipalities and groups for lost funding. Uh, this is very, very specific. It was $50,000. Um, this was their beach fund. Their, their, their revenue. Yeah. revenue. Yeah. Their yeah. revenue their, fund. They call it so, the enterprise, the enterprise yeah. fund. I mean, they couldn't collect any um, non-resident beach stickers. And, of course, we had 50% capacity on our beaches. So it's on there. It's a placeholder. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, there's the, you know the, the thought was to have that there so that we could... You know, buy the tractor when we need it, the beach cleaner thing that they have, the, the, the lifeguard chairs, um, maybe a trolley someday to bring people to our beaches, whatever. Um, the, uh, the ATVs that they use, the, the, the quads, that could come out of the beach fund, and they just got depleted. So I'd like to bring that back. Um, security cameras around town, those are, we, we've heard about the senior center buses and the catalytic converters. We have spots in town that need security cameras. They all have to be tied in together. They all have to be on the same network. They're not now. The cameras down at the boardwalk that don't work right now are different than the ones up at the park. They're different than the one down at Niantic Fire Station that looks over our downtown. They all have to be on the same network. And they'll all be tied into the new public safety building. And dispatch will have a wall of TVs to be able to switch around and look at our cameras, and we need to um, put that all together. We have an exact price on that. We do. That that forty-four thousand is is a strong number. Seven thousand dollars for touchless faucets. We have gotten into a place now where some of the faucets in the community center are touchless. That you you know. You, when you go to the airport and you just put your hand under, they turn on. Well, the women's room got that. The men's room didn't. Uh, we'd like them to have them here in, in, the, in the building as well. And also bottle um, fillers instead of the, the old bubblers, we used to call them in Massachusetts, the water fountains. Um, so kind of revamping some of that. Again, COVID in mind, sustainability in mind. And, you know, um, we're, all, I, I, we're all germ freaks now. Let's face it. So, and, and probably for the right reasons. This um, this next item is one hundred fifty thousand dollars for a generator. The generator is for the public safety building. The public safety building um, is nearing completion, but we're um, in the final stages of determining what kind of projects need to happen now while we have the build while we have the builders there, and, and and not go back several years later to do things over again. Some things were discovered when we blew up the building a little bit that the walls weren't firewalls and they had to be reconstructed. The ceiling tiles um, uh, got replaced in that building for aesthetic reasons and so it just doesn't look like a shabby old building. And, and the lighting got fixed. Um, we blew open the roof to put the elevator shaft in and um, when we did that we kind of, you know, the integrity of the roof um, is in question. We know we have to replace the roof in time. We'd like to do it now. The price we've gotten is 50% off of what the price was quoted um, when we were looking at doing it originally. It's about 100 to 150 thousand dollars if we do it right now before we open the building. But there were several items in the contingency, and we want to do this building right. If we get the grant for the generator, which has been applied for, and we've got an oral okay on it. A preliminary okay, then the hundred and fifty thousand dollars would be reimbursed back to this fund. If not, we got to cover ourselves because we want to go ahead with the rest of the building and do that right. So that's in there now. I'm not asking for your approval tonight. We can have we can have multi-layer discussion on this. Paul has a lot of figures. We have a town building committee meeting tomorrow night where we'll be discussing this in depth. We want to do the building right. We don't want there to be any liabilities in that building. We want to open it and breathe a sigh of relief that we finally got it done. And, and it was this group that um, helped champion that. Well, considering that uh, all of our emergency management services are going to be from yes. that side, uh, directed from that side, I think it's a must. It is a must. Um, you know, we could pay for it through for what we have, but then we can't finish the building the way it should be finished. So there's, you know, there's two sides to this. There's a balance to this. The bottom line is we're very confident we're going to get reimbursed, but I can't spend the money without having something to back it up. Obviously, we're a municipality. 
Um, <laughs> it's not the Nickerson uh, home budget where I buy things and figure out how to pay for it later. Um, digital conversion. Um, Isam Tom Clark, she, she too would like to digitize the town records. I think some of them have been done, but we want to get the rest of them digitized. She has a hard number at $14,500 uh, to do that. Um, the parking lot at Dara Pond, seventy-five thousand dollars. There's your, there's your Dara. Uh, there's, there's that. It is um, how many spaces? I think you said it was going to triple what's up there now, and I think there's a. I think it's thirty or forty spaces. Yeah, because that. There's ten up there now. No, it's ten. No, there's there's ten. Yeah, it's ten. Ten or eleven. So I think it's thirty to forty spaces. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's thirty to forty spaces. Sure. Yeah. There yeah. is a permeable type asphalt you it, can yeah. install, like yeah. the rock, which it, it's better on maintenance. Um, you gotta be careful when you plow it, but I've recently installed it, and yeah. uh, it lets the water go through, um, but it's it's more of a hotter surface than stone. It's it's wet, which way you wait for it to melt. It's asphalt now. It's asphalt now, and I brought up the the parking lot that we did a hole in was an experimental lot, and it has it has the porous concrete. Oh yeah, that has block, but there yeah. is a there is a permeable asphalt type surface yeah. that you can use. But whether we'll it's block, it we'll wh yeah. whatever. Ask those questions when yeah, it's appropriate. Look how those hold up with the, yeah. Well, if I just while we're thinking yeah. about it, I, the one thing that concerns me about the permeable asphalt uh, is when you're over an aquifer, uh, what are you introducing into the aquifer as the water filters through the asphalt? So, I, I think we we have to at least think that one through. Good point. There's two frames of thought on that too. If you do that, then you got to have the system that that cycles the water for the, the grip. Oil. You need drainage, which we do have down at the hole in the wall. Right. Yeah. Proper drainage and proper yeah. um, the uh, cyclone yeah. cleaning yep. thing. Absolutely. You see the kayak and the dinghy dock here. It's it's a it's a definitely a a, a want. Uh, we talked about it before. We put it in for a steep grant before, but then we use the money on the bathrooms when the FEMA regulations changed. Um, the dinghy dock is inviting tourists, tourism to our town where they'll be able to uh, moor out, out in the harbor. Of course, we're, <laughs> we're limiting ourselves on the moorings now and maybe even limiting even more. That was the discussion today. We may have to, have to do a rollback um, according to DEEP of some of the mooring numbers that we have. But we are looking to you know, uh, invite people into our town and, and also the kayak launch, which is an ADA kayak launch. So it's a handicap accessible kayak launch. Um, it's on there. It, it would be in phase two or three or four in, in this funding. Um, but it's something we should talk about. We couldn't get a grant for that, for uh, waterfront development, waterfront Yeah, we can go back to the steep and try for that. We're, we're there is a steep round coming up, so there's there's other sources. Absolutely, and there's continue to be. And there's a lot of as we talked um, the other day. There's a lot of state money that will be floating around to municipalities that aren't necessarily the ARP money. The paving is for the middle school. Oh, right, real quick. Yep. Yeah. The kayak and ding dock should be ready to go. Those are approved. Right? Those were approved, and that design that design permit and, and it is permitted. And yeah. that permit does expire. We can renew it. Um, we can request a, re um, a renewal. Yeah. Um, well, we did talk the other day that I had read that the state has money that they're going to release yes. for on a first come first serve basis for projects that are shovel ready. Yeah. That's perfect. We'll talk. We'll talk to our state officials about that. And there's an there is a connection. Um, with the dinghy docks and the moorings, uh, it's going to be very important to have that pump out boat yes. further up functioning oh, yeah. because that will reduce the pressure uh, to have to reduce the number of moorings. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It's all tying together, isn't it? It is. It's all, yes, a big knot. <laughs> the municipal, paving. Municipal ecosystem. No, it's good. We have a need. Um, we have a paving project that is in need of funding, and you know we can go several different routes, including putting it on the uh, you know capital plan for next year, or 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 
low sip or something, but um, th we're doing this um, uh, well improvement filter project uh, down behind the middle school or past the middle school, um, actually behind Lily B, right? And we are reshaping the road down there as well, and the road will have to be repaved. That wasn't put into the budget, apparently. Um, we're, we're trying to improve the parking back there for the Little League field. It says it's very limited, and we'll do, um, I think... The angle. So angled, angled parking. parking. Yeah, angled parking will put a lot yeah. more cars in there. But also, the curbing and the drainage down there is horrible that... Often, I'm going back Little League days, a long time ago, but you get out of your car and there'll be a, there'll be a four inch puddle there. Yeah. Um, always puddles, in the middle of July, in a drought, there'll be a puddle down there. So we gotta fix the drainage, and there is a paving project that has been priced out to $27,000. We've also added, after that, in, in speaking um, I, to Roseanne the other day, tree removal was one thing we did bring up already. We have a, a desperate need to um, aggressively hit some town-owned trees in this town. Part of that would be to replace some of them. We had to take down two of the big trees in the front of the town hall, if you noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, we might want to put something back up so that, you know, 20 years from now, people can appreciate it. Um, but definitely tree removal. Uh, we have these, these old country roads, and not even country roads, Oswegatchie Hills Road, and the trees are a canopy. And, you know, you talk about sustainability, the next hurricane that whips up, uh, and you live down on Saunders Point, you can't get out. And there's some trees that are dead that we have to go in there and take out, never mind the canopy. It doesn't take a hurricane. Last year's thunderstorm. It's, uh, yeah. Right? I know. And we, right. Isiasis. Hu hurricane uh, or tropical storm. Yeah. Right. Uh, plants that attract them. Right, right, right. And, and that could be part of that. Sure. So tree removal, replacement, and, and that could include that. And I don't even have a number next to it. Frankly, we put twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars in our budget every year for. But I, we might need a couple hundred thousand to do this right and to kind of actually. I think our job tonight is to get the ideas out. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the point. So Some thank you. General yeah. ideas. And the last one was, um, as you see, I put down, uh, well, open space funding. There is a discussion about what do we do? Should we start putting money away every year for open space funding? Um, should it be part of, you know, we talked about that. that it should mm. be part of, like, whatever the budget is. It should be 1% of the budget goes to open space funding or 0.1%. But something where it's a dedicated amount of money that gets tacked on on top of whatever the budget is, and we just are locked into it and we must do it, kind of a lockbox situation for open space. Um, we used to have a yeah, placeholder for 250 but we yeah. never funded it. Yeah. It, it was kind of a placeholder. A lot of times we would put it there, but we'd, that's one of the first things we would always the get. The first thing we cut. We can't just put this money in a fund, the money we're getting, into a fund because it has to be spent by the end of 2024. Um, but, but if we took something else off an existing list... Yeah. And, and put that money in there, yeah. You know, some of these capital items that come up. There's way to be, uh, um, there's ways to, to work that. And lastly, the giving garden, I had forgotten, they had called me for some money, and um, I just put 20000 down. Again, we're talking about sustainability, we're talking about care and share and shoreline. Um, it probably, that 20000 would fit into that 100000 up top, but I just, I wrote it down. Oh, okay. If there yeah. are more things. Yeah, I, I, yes, ma'am. I, oh, go, go ahead. Roseanne. Yeah. Uh, I would like to add in a grant writer to be shared with the Board of Education. So they pay half and we pay half. We get half time, they get half time. Particularly for our historic properties. Uh, I notice we don't have that on this list, uh, any uh, money for the historic properties. Um, I think that there, there are monies available, but we need somebody to do the work. And a lot of our volunteers that serve on commissions just aren't up to that. I wrote down grant writer, 50% salary, and at historic properties. Um, consider donating money. So if the Board of Ed would join us and yeah. do 50%. Yeah. And also money for historic properties. Person. 
Maybe we can just finish the Sam Smith house and be done with that yeah. conversation. Yeah. Also, if I, you were done, Roseanne, or? Okay. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. Um, See that list um, in front of her? Uh, the uh, artificial turf that the football field is starting to wear and um, also the walkway. And, and a lot of uh, the public, every day, so you see members of the public, even during the school day, out there on the walkway. Uh, so I think that that should be part of our responsibility when repair comes along for that. Uh, the artificial turf, I think that's part of our responsibility or not. Um, Handicap access, you know, for time I was using a cane and a walker and I really realized how hard it is. And this is a p building that's supposed to be accessible to the public. And I think that to start with, there's not a bathroom in this building that's truly handicap accessible. With, with a wheelchair, ability to get in, to get to get the wheelchair turned around to be able to get into the stall. And I think that that is something that we uh, should get a bid on and see what it would cost to do. To rehab one of our existing bathrooms or to take one of our storage cabinets or something. Uh, we've got a storage unit out here. Perhaps that could be converted into a bathroom. But again, access, uh, access to this building is difficult. And I think uh, technically, if you make, I think under the state handicap guidelines, if you make renovations to a building, you're responsible for upgrading it to current standards. Based on the, yeah, it's based on the percentage of renovations you make. Yeah. It's like 50% or something like that. So, um, <laughs> you talked before about charging stations for vehicles to make uh, the electric cars, and particularly maybe downtown and a couple of Flanders. Is that something that you think we can get support from from the electric companies? Like every source uh, to help us with I don't that? know who pays for that. If the companies themselves, because they're, they're an entity that charges uh, if, if, if we just invite them in. I did have a conversation with Tesla as Costco was going in, but they were already completed and the timing was off. Mm -hmm. And they were building over and it would have been a great spot. Mm -hmm. As you plug in, you go in for half an hour, you come out, you car start. I think this would also help our downtown. If we could get them maybe at uh, the gas station downtown, people, what's it take? Uh, you've, you've got the car, I don't know how long it takes to charge, but this would encourage people to leave their car in the charging station and go into the shops. Yep. Maybe more at the uh, public parking. Yeah. Yeah. Behind mm. Yeah, not a private, but but we can look into it. And actually, private. I mean, m maybe the Mitchell Trust puts them in their parking lots um, as, as yeah, a, maybe there's you a know, and, and public private parking. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, beach sand. Beach sand for Crescent Beach. Yes, or, uh, I think uh, they're losing they're losing sand, and we had previous conversation about that as well as part of the POCD. That would be something that wouldn't be a huge amount, but it would also support something from the POCD. Plan. The POCD so says we need beach sand. Am I hearing that? I'm, I just—I'm not sure if I—it's no, actually I, gotten kind of louder in here. Well, we had talked about this uh, earlier, I believe, the need for building up our beaches. Well, you and I talk. Well, yeah, in. in absolutely. Um, there's there's been some discussion about that. So good. I. I I agree with you on that, and um, and also um, dredging of the Niantic River at some point is going to need to happen. Um, probably federal grants, state grants involved yeah. with that one. Um, but I think, again, as people are enthused about the PLCD, we've got people that want to work on it, now's the time to roll out some of these projects, yeah. even though we're going, not going to necessarily be funding them right now. Yep. We're ready. Okay. Um, and I think that's it for right now. Okay. I've got I've got one thing I'd like to add to the yeah. list. Um, 
<clears throat> some municipalities where, where they have storm sewers uh, entering into the rivers, um, uh, they've affixed uh, these large mesh nets that capture uh, soda bottles, uh, all the very you know, cigarette butts, uh, you know, all the stuff that people throw out of their window and ends up washing into the storm sewers and making it to the river. Um, I don't think they're that expensive. I think it would uh, really help to uh, keep some of that junk out of our river. And uh, I'd like to see if we can look into that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, same picture as that. Kevin, what do you have there? I've uh, met with, uh, talked to some of the, the Veterans Council, uh, uh, the American Legion and the VFW. They've lost uh, some revenue over the last year too. VFW hasn't been able to have their roast beef dinners. The Legion hasn't been able to have their breakfast or dinners until recently. And uh, the Veterans Council hasn't been able to sell the bricks down by the green, which is a revenue. So uh, they have identified some minor needs. VFW has talked about needing of a freezer, which they had anticipated using the money from the uh, that um, same thing uh, the uh, Veterans Council has indicated they're a little short for even putting flags and markers on the graves of the veterans graves this uh, Memorial Day so not much but they've that and they're going to work on a formal proposal to bring forward uh, for a request okay the veterans groups I have two things um, just uh, some of the youth sports have made requests to pay for some of it some smaller items the scoreboard I think some of the youth sport did lose some funds last year. <clears throat> I had one day this year I asked them to just coordinate with them if there's any request. So I wouldn't mind putting a bullet there just to remind us. Okay. And the other one is um, time marks. I'd like to have a, if we get to the point where we do have some extra here, uh, we do have an extensive list of sidewalk extensions interconnections that we'd like to do. And some repair. Some than and, and some, some repair. And some repair. Some repair. Mm -hmm. So I think we should put yeah. a place on it. We I think we had talked about the need for that yeah. earlier and we just didn't get on the list. So we specifically talk, talked about uh, a study for uh, 161. That's starting. Right there. Right. That's starting <laughs> September 1st. Um, so we would stay off the state roads anyway. We'd be looking at, you know, our roads. Um, the state roads, they'll pay for that. As, I, as we explained, you know, the whole idea of that study is bike path, walkability, the whole the money comes from a walkability federal grant. So, I mean, it's all about tying pedestrians together, not cars going straight down a road. So um, that's what hopefully that will progress. But yeah, there's some spots. Um, we, have fi we, have, we have sidewalk money that, that needs to be spent too. Yeah. So I, I think the public works is just Buried right now, but I think they'll get around to yeah, that right as well. Yeah, sidewalks took a, a backseat for a while. We had other big major projects we didn't have, but I think now it's time to yep. Good. It's a nice start, guys. We're just going to need to be a bigger town with a bigger ARP funding. Like New Haven yeah. got $190 million, and we're, we're, we're tapped out here at about a little over $2 million. And, and, um, you can make it work, Mark. We'll make it work, right? We're yeah. an efficient And if you even said to, you know, uh, Karen, uh, not Karen Chair, probably won't need 100000 Same thing with Main Street. There's a so lot there. There's, a, there's lot. a lot of things yeah. that will slip into the next one hundred, yeah. uh, $1.8 million that the next um, administration will tackle. And thanks for doing the prep list. Thanks. Very helpful. The, there are things I'm going to push forward and, and move move to you. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have confirmation of the money for the first meeting in June. Um, if it's not the first meeting in June, it'll be the first meeting in July because it will have to go through the appropriations process. No sense bringing it to you the second meeting in June because it's still going to have to sit out there for the Board of Finance to see it at their second week, the second week of the month meeting. So. Um, No, I can only imagine. Th th that's the last word. <laughs> Ex officio reports, if you would. Uh, uh, who would like to start? Uh, Mr. Salerno, let's say. We'll go down. Just yeah, real quick, uh, planning. Uh, I wasn't able to attend. I had a conflict, but I did talk to the chairman. 
basically they had two uh, zone referrals, one for a text amendment um, that would require, if you have a, a special permit uh, public hearing, and it gets continued, you have to update your sign with the new dates and times. And then the last one was to allow um, a food services uh, for tap room breweries, um, which kind of impact downtown. So yeah. those, uh, they actually voted that they were consistent with the POCD. Um, library, they amended the bylaws, some of their bylaws and their certificate of incorporation. Um, some of the stuff that, you know, what they're doing in the library is probably going to be redone since today because everything's been opening up, so I don't want to Yeah, lots of things changing very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, you want to go? Yeah, real quick, uh, the, the score group that uh, uh, made a presentation to us uh, a few meetings ago, uh, I've been reaching out to them, and next week, Dan and I will be meeting with them to uh, either in person or hybrid, just to talk to them, and uh, we'll get back to you on that. Parks and Rec has started selling uh, passes, they have opened it up to uh, out of uh, town residents again this year because of the li lifting of the COVID restrictions. And last week alone, they sold over, which was the first week, they sold over 100 season out of out of town resident passes. They usually sell about 400, but it was. I was it, there today. Okay. This afternoon, and it was not a parking space to be had. Oh, for uh, getting yeah, <laughs> they weren't voting. We know that by the totals, but so. <laughs> uh, you were at the community center. There wasn't a parking space. No. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, well, the, yeah, yeah. No, today was Beautiful. a gorgeous day, and they don't need the you don't need a pass right now anyway. So, um, Beautiful days. Yeah, and they've also uh, hired a new program director because Carol is uh, retiring at the end of uh, next month after several decades with the town. So uh, uh, we'll wait for Dave to give us the name of the person to, yeah. that they're doing that for. Uh, I did cover board of ed, and, and high school graduation is either the 16th or the 17th. 17th is the rain date. Uh, it'll be four tickets per graduate, two tickets on the uh, turf, two tickets in the uh, bleachers. And the uh, invited guests and dignitaries, us, will be seated in the bleachers. June 16th? Or 17th. Yeah. So we ha that's a Wednesday. Wednesday or a Thursday. So we have a Board of Selectmen meeting that evening. Yeah, so we'll probably have to schedule a special meeting on the 17th and pray that it doesn't <laughs> rain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll be out. We'll be having a meeting on Saturday. Um, what about on Tuesday? Is it conflict with other meetings? There might be conflict in the room, but we'll look into it, and yeah. I will um, we'll have Sandy poll. Can this show? I think would it be planning? Planning for Tuesday. Yeah. I'll look into it. Maybe it'll be Tuesday, maybe it'll be Thursday, but... Um, no, the second Tuesday is the 8th. And maybe we won't have an agenda item if, if the American Rescue Funding doesn't come through. Oh, we will have a big meeting mm -hmm. at the beginning of June for all the... Appro uh, the um, not appropriations. Transfers. Budget the, transfers? No, the bonding, all the stuff that we all buy. The, oh, oh, yeah. Okay. All the capital stuff comes up because that's when we go to market for the acquisition. Thank you. Acquisition um, funding all gets done in one meeting, and I think it's going to be June. So it might be the beginning of June, which might make the second meeting very light. I'll let you know. Okay. But it is on a Wednesday. Okay, I'm Sorry all done. That was, no, it was all done. I just wanted to make sure that. I would like to have a second meeting and not have it canceled because we meet once in July and once in August. Yeah. We will have time uh, to review this list. Yeah. And see if any additional things. Yeah, we may need to meet twice in July. We always do. So the yeah. one Just meeting is pretty much a policy To take anyway. action on some of these items. Yeah, right. there might be some activity right. coming up. Yeah, you're right. You good? Yeah, I'm good. That was it. Yeah. Uh, let's see, with the Historic Properties Commission, um, right now they're without a chairperson, and so we're going to have to address uh, that. Uh, there is a, a member, Ben Bullock, that wants to be appointed. Uh, as a full member, and I'm not quite sure what the correct procedure is, is to do that, and so I, I guess they are seeking guidance from the board on how, how to best approach that. Uh, I don't know if they if they need something from us or if they can do it uh, on their own. So I, I, I wasn't sure what to advise them. Well, they elect their own chair. They can elect their own but chair. We would appoint to fill the vacancy. Right. Which commission? Uh, Historic Properties Commission. Yeah, that's our appointment. 
So it's too late to add it to the agenda today, but perhaps for our next meeting we do can. Do you have someone? They do have someone in mind, a Ben Bullock, that would like to be made a full member. Would you like to work with him? Yeah, very much so. He's, he's, he's the fellow, you've met him. He runs the Samuel Smith House um, um, group. Mm -hmm. So that, that'd be great. And I don't think that's a conflict. Because we usually no, no. Two, well, two appointed boards. Yeah, so. right. So would it, would it be appropriate for me to add that to the agenda? Make a motion, even though it's late in the meeting. I don't know if I can do that. No. We, we, no. we usually no. need an address and serving until type of okay. thing. So let me get that for the next meeting. Yeah, make sure we get we'll that, do that down. Ben Bullock, we'll we take care of that. Um, okay, that'd be great. Thank you very much. And uh, another ways of working hard to take care of all the properties and come up with fundraisers and all the things they do. So that's about it for me. Thanks, Paul. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend uh, this month's Inland Wetlands meeting, and the um, Harbor Management meeting last night was uh, postponed. Uh, to, as you mentioned earlier, the um, Public Safety, uh, the Building Committee meeting is tomorrow night. I would like to make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen that we arrange to tour the building sometime in the near future. That's a great idea. On it. Uh, you can great thank idea. Roseanne for the idea. She gave me the opportunity Maybe to make it. <laughs> maybe before our next meeting, maybe before our next meeting, an hour before we can meet down there. <laughs> Give credit where credit is due. Um, yeah. Um, do we have to publicize that? That's not a meeting, right? We just no. If we're all there, it will be a meeting. It will be a meeting. <laughs> if we're discussing business, it's a meeting. If we're touring a property, it's not. It's not a property that we. I, I don't know. The, we can post it that it's a special we meeting the, uh, touring the building. When we toured the police station a couple times last couple I know. Years. Was that a meeting? Did we publicize it? I don't know if we You can decide it if you have to publicize it. But I'd recommend our meetings at 730. I'd recommend we do it at 630. Yeah. You know, give it a full a hour. hour there, give us yeah. a chance to get back up to come back and get back. Um, we'll, we'll remember to um, invite you all and arrange that. And, and here again, too, I mean, June, right? Yeah. Yeah, and if you're we're worried, you know, until we're going to be probably having access to areas where security stuff is going to be in question. So I mean, we could easily make that to possibly could consider that you know somewhat ex some part of it as executive session. If you're going back into the cell block area to see what it looks like, that's not something you would normally have the public having access that's to true. anyway. Yeah. We'll discuss that. Yeah, and yeah. figure that out. Same thing in the dispatch area. There's a lot of you know sensitive information and equipment in there. Okay. All good? That's it, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. See you tomorrow night. I might be a little late. I have a Coast Guard thing at 6. Mm -hmm. Some rededication of something or a new light. Uh, yeah, and then I'll jump on the phone. So um, if you need me, I'll be there, but I might be a little late for the town building committee. And I'm only there to answer questions because last time there were questions lingering that you didn't get answers for. So. Yeah, and, and I will say the town staff is responded to Step all the up. outstanding Good. items. Great, thank you. Mrs. Hardy? Yes. Um, I was stuck in a traffic jam uh, Saturday. Uh, at noon time, shortly, at, shortly before noon time. Uh, and I thought, this must be a horrible accident. And it turned out that it was only the president coming. Oh, the Coast Guard, oh, Coast Guard I, came again. Well, that was an I accident. I can't believe that not one of us was invited to attend. Did you go? No. No, but that's usually. Don't tell me because. Not because of politics. Oh. Oh. No, it's too much of a hassle. But the 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 cog. Just trying to the, find a way to get around it. The cog is um and you know it was just too limited and too much and um I usually go, um but the cog is usually invited the council of government members. But always exciting when the sitting president or vice president comes to town. That is very nice. Yep. And I think the next time this happens, we've got to make sure he's invited to our town. Yeah. Four years from now. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm going to have a fun academy year. It's canceled, and uh, it's it tomorrow night. And um, mercifully, that's all I have. Thank you. I don't have much. I, I, I gotta, I, uh, folks, we, we, are, um, we need to find someone to be on a police commission. I was going to bring that up. Yeah. Um, we, uh, there's been a, a call to, you know, uh, look for a female, a woman, 
um, to kind of round you know, to start changing the makeup of the board of, of not just male and uh, even not just Caucasian uh, but in time let it reflect our community but certainly a, a woman um, should replace the woman that was on and it's been a little bit too long COVID has really gotten in the way I get it but we do need to solicit and find someone who could work um, to make our police commission better make our police department better and also reflect the community's wishes so um, please let's make that a priority yeah I know and be I have two men that are dying to be on there um, and um, you know um, then it needs to be a woman it just needs to be a woman yeah well it's been months so we need to we need to bring something forward or we need to plug the hole for now um, and don't forget when you when you appoint someone they only go they only pick up where that term goes until it ends so that some of the terms are ending this coming January anyway and then we can be a little bit more uh, deliberate in rounding off that board okay so um, that's a call to duty there okay, okay. Um, we are marching in a parade on Monday the 31st uh, this Monday but the following Monday at a 2 p.m. kickoff time um, Mrs. Hardy promised me she'll be she'll be there he promised me okay so um, wear your red white your best red white and blue I don't even want to know what you're gonna wear mr. Cunningham I'll come up with something it's a big old bow tie and Maybe on stilts, and you can be Uncle Sam. Hey, oh yeah, hey, you know. Um, um, the evening before that Sunday, it's that Sunday, I think. Sunday is, is the thirtieth. Uh, is the uh, is the vigil. Vigil at seven, I believe, seven thirty on the town um, Memorial Green uh, downtown. Yeah. So uh, please all come for that if you're in town. I know it's a three day weekend, and that Sunday is right in the middle of it. But if you're in town, please come down, um, and we will. Um, um, give a proclamation to the veterans groups who do so much for our community and um, are so valued. And if I could, I was at the uh, Veterans Council when they were discussing this. They're in need of vintage cars. So if anybody out there has a vintage car and is interested in joining the parade, just uh, reach out to any member of the uh, VFW or Veterans Council. You haven't updated yours for a while there, Dan. Is it, yeah, mine's kind of turning into a Yeah, vintage. it's yeah, turning yeah. that way, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Yes, this uh, is, this is um, National Emergency Management Personnel Week. And so a shout out to our emergency management teams in town. They do a stellar job. Uh, the other night I had a personal emergency in my household. And it was 3.30 in the morning and they were at my house in 10 minutes. They're amazing. At three, at three o'clock in the morning. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. sure. They've had a busy week. Yes. Yeah. 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 We've had two fires in town. Um, uh, today, w there was another fire up in the orchards. Um, and of course, the old Holdridges, uh, that building supply company um, uh, out by R Route 1, um, had a t terrible fire on Saturday. Uh, so our, our volunteer group has, has had a very, very busy week, That's indeed. Right. Um, thank you for bringing that up. I think it's also Public Works Appreciation month or something yes. it's it's they're all tied in public servers or something like that so part of that emergency man emergency personnel it's also public works and i'm going to be presenting a proclamation on friday at a luncheon up at our fsb building on our behalf uh, to our public works crews and um and i'll thank them uh from all of you uh for all the hard work that they do and we know that we know that the day after a storm or just a couple hours after a storm when you drive around and look at the amazing job they do and then you get into some other communities in the area or on a state road and um well on behalf of the rest of the board i'd like to ask if you would send a letter to our emergency management sure sure mm -hmm. You put you you put so much work on my plate. I, I know, that's why these these that. meetings. I I don't know what's coming at me, but I do know I'll be leaving with a lot. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> oh, I'm busy. It's been, been very busy at the town hall. We're kind of getting back into it. I'll, I'll just a last uh, comment to everyone. We do have, um, um, we have changed our mask mandate in our town hall, in our town buildings, our town owned buildings, um, that if you are fully vaccinated, two shots um, in, in two weeks of, of waiting, um, you are, can, right, but obviously, um, you can come into a town building unmasked. Otherwise, we ask that you stay masked, and some of our workers will stay masked just because they deal with a lot of public. And um, again, I think we've all tipped over to the germaphobe um, side of things, and rightfully so. We want to stay healthy and um, stay kicking. So that's all I have. Um, there's plenty more, but um, the time is getting late, and we do have an executive session that will be very, very, very short because mm -hmm. um, we're not prepared. Uh, the, the the agenda that was amended yesterday at okay. at, at, at quarter of four. You you had it in your hand yesterday, but I don't know if you got the update. Okay, it's two B and C on your agenda that we moved down after the selectmen's report. There is no public here this evening. I know, so I I'm not um, uh, kicking anyone out of the out of the room here for fear of shutting off their comments so we can move into executive session come out and then and, and then adjourn our meeting sandy i'll let you go home early okay i'll move to uh enter into executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel issues Second. all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed any abstain okay we can stay here